The Book of Yasher, a captioned audiobook narrated by In His Word 2. Chapter 42 And they went and sat on the opposite side, about a distance of a bow shot, and they sat there to eat bread. And whilst they were eating, they held counsel together what was to be done with him, whether to slay him or to bring him back to his father. They were holding the council when they lifted up their eyes and saw, and behold, there was a company of Ishmaelites coming at a distance by the road of Gilead, going down to Egypt. And Judah said unto them, What gain will it be to us if we slay our brother? Peradventure God will require him from us. This, then, is the counsel proposed concerning him, which you shall do unto him. Behold, this company of Ishmaelites going down to Egypt. Now, therefore, come, let us dispose of him to them, and let not our hand be upon him. And they will lead him along with them, and he will be lost amongst the people of the land and we will not put him to death with our own hands. And the proposal pleased his brethren, and they did according to the word of Judah. And whilst they were discoursing about this matter, and before the company of Ishmaelites had come up to them, seven trading men of Midian passed by them. And as they passed, they were thirsty. And they lifted up their eyes and saw the pit in which Joseph was immured. And they looked, and behold, every species of bird was upon him. And these Midianites ran to the pit to drink water, for they thought that it contained water. And on coming before the pit, they heard the voice of Joseph crying and weeping in the pit. And they looked down into the pit. And they saw, and behold, there was a youth of comely appearance, and well favored. And they called unto him, and said, Who art thou, and who brought thee hither, and who placed thee in this pit, in the wilderness? And they all assisted to raise up Joseph, and they drew him out, and brought him up from the pit and took him and went away on their journey and passed by his brethren. And these said unto them, Why do you do this, to take our servant from us and to go away? Surely we placed this youth in the pit because he rebelled against us, and you come and bring him up and lead him away. Now then, give us back our servant. And the Midianites answered and said unto the sons of Jacob, Is this your servant, or does this man attend you? Peradventure you are all his servants, for he is more comely and well favored than any of you. And why do you all speak falsely unto us? Now therefore we will not listen to your words, nor attend to you. For we found the youth in the pit in the wilderness, and we took him. We will therefore go on. And all the sons of Jacob approached them, and rose up to them, and said unto them, Give us back our servant, and why will you die by the edge of the sword? And the Midianites cried out against them, and they drew their swords, and approached to fight with the sons of Jacob. And behold, Simeon rose up from his seat against them, and sprang upon the ground, and drew his sword, and approached the Midianites, and he gave a terrible shout before them, so that his shouting was heard at a distance. And the earth shook at Simeon's shouting. And the Midianites were terrified on account of Simeon and the noise of his shouting, and they fell upon their faces and were excessively alarmed. And Simeon said unto them, Verily I am Simeon, the son of Jacob the Hebrew, who have, only with my brother, 
destroyed the city of Shechem and the cities of the Amorites. So shall God moreover do unto me, that if all your brethren, the people of Midian, and also the kings of Canaan, were to come with you, they could not fight against me. Now, therefore, give us back the youth whom you have taken, lest I give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the earth. And the Midianites were more afraid of Simeon, and they approached the sons of Jacob with terror and fright, and with pathetic words, saying, Surely you have said that the young man is your servant, and that he rebelled against you, and therefore you placed him in the pit. What then will you do with a servant who rebels against his master? Now, therefore, sell him unto us, and we will give you all that you require for him. And the Lord was pleased to do this in order that the sons of Jacob should not slay their brother. And the Midianites saw that Joseph was of a comely appearance and well favored, and they desired him in their hearts, and were urgent to purchase him from his brethren. And the sons of Jacob hearkened to the Midianites, and they sold their brother Joseph to them for twenty pieces of silver. And Reuben their brother was not with them, and the Midianites took Joseph and continued their journey to Gilead. They were going along the road, and the Midianites repented of what they had done, in having purchased the young man. And one said to the other, What is this thing that we have done in taking this youth from the Hebrews, who is of comely appearance and well favored? Perhaps this youth is stolen from the land of the Hebrews, and why then have we done this thing? And if he should be sought for and found in our hands, we shall die through him. Now surely, hardy and powerful men have sold him to us, the strength of one whom you saw this day. Perhaps they stole him from his land, with their might and with their powerful arm, and have therefore sold him to us for the small value which we gave unto them. And whilst they were thus discoursing together, they looked, and behold, the company of Ishmaelites, which was coming at first, and which the sons of Jacob saw, was advancing toward the Midianites, and the Midianites said to each other, Come, let us sell this youth to the company of Ishmaelites who are coming toward us, and we will take for him the little that we gave for him, and we will be delivered from this evil. And they did so. And they reached the Ishmaelites, and the Midianites sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, which they had given for him to his brethren. And the Midianites went on their road to Gilead, and the Ishmaelites took Joseph, and they let him ride upon one of the camels, and they were leading him to Egypt. And Joseph heard that the Ishmaelites were proceeding to Egypt. And Joseph lamented and wept at this thing, that he was to be so far removed from the land of Canaan, from his father. And he wept bitterly whilst he was riding upon the camel. And one of their men observed him, and made him go down from the camel and walk on foot. And notwithstanding this, Joseph continued to cry and weep. And he said, Oh, my father, my father. And one of the Ishmaelites rose up and smote Joseph upon the cheek. And he still continued to weep. And Joseph was fatigued in the road and was unable to proceed on account of the bitterness of his soul. And they all smote him and afflicted him in the road. And they terrified him in order that he might cease from weeping. And the Lord saw the ambition of Joseph and his trouble, and the Lord brought down upon those men darkness and confusion. 
and the hand of every one that smote him became withered. And they said to each other, What is this thing that God has done to us in the road? And they knew not that this befell them on account of Joseph. And the men proceeded on the road, and they passed along the road of Ephrath, where Rachel was buried. And Joseph reached his mother's grave, and Joseph hastened and ran to his mother's grave, and fell upon the grave and wept. And Joseph cried aloud upon his mother's grave, and he said, O oh, my mother, my mother, O oh, thou who didst give me birth, awake now, and rise, and see thy son, how he has been sold for a slave, and no one to pity him. O oh, rise, and see thy son, weep with me on account of my troubles, and see the heart of my brethren. Arouse, my mother, arouse. Awake from thy sleep for me, and direct thy battles against my brethren. Oh, how have they stripped me of my coat, and sold me already twice for a slave, and separated me from my father, and there is no one to pity me. Arouse, and lay thy cause against them before God, and see whom God will justify in the judgment and whom he will condemn. Rise, O oh my mother, rise, awake from thy sleep, and see my father, how his soul is with me this day, and comfort him, and ease his heart. And Joseph continued to speak these words, and Joseph cried aloud, and wept bitterly upon his mother's grave, and he ceased speaking, and from the bitterness of heart he became still as a stone upon the grave. And Joseph heard a voice speaking to him from beneath the ground, which answered him with bitterness of heart, and with a voice of weeping and praying in these words, My son, my son Joseph, I have heard the voice of thy weeping, and the voice of thy lamentation. I have seen thy tears. I know thy troubles, my son, and it grieves me for thy sake, and abundant grief is added to my grief. Now therefore, my son Joseph, my son, hope to the Lord, and wait for him, and do not fear, for the Lord is with thee. He will deliver thee from all trouble. Rise, my son. Go down unto Egypt with thy masters, and do not fear, for the Lord is with thee, my son. And she continued to speak like unto these words unto Joseph, and she was still. And Joseph heard this, and he wondered greatly at this, and he continued to weep. And after this one of the Ishmaelites observed him crying and weeping upon the grave, and his anger was kindled against him, and he drove him from there, and he smote him and cursed him. And Joseph said unto the men, May I find grace in your sight to take me back to my father's house, and he will give you abundance of riches. And they answered him, saying, Art thou not a slave, and where is thy father? And if thou hadst a father, Thou wouldest not already twice have been sold for a slave for so little value. And their anger was still roused against him, and they continued to smite him and to chastise him. And Joseph wept bitterly. And the Lord saw Joseph's affliction, and the Lord again smote these men and chastised them. And the Lord caused darkness to envelop them upon the earth. And the lightning flashed, and the thunder roared, and the earth shook at the voice of the thunder and of the mighty wind. And the men were terrified, and knew not where they should go. And the beast and camel stood still, and they led them, but they would not go. They smote them, and they crouched upon the ground. And the men said to each other, What? Is this that our God has done to us? 
what are our transgressions and what are our sins that this thing has thus befallen us? And one of them answered and said unto them, Perhaps on account of the sin of afflicting this slave has this thing happened this day to us. Now therefore implore him strongly to forgive us, and then we shall know on whose account this evil befalleth us. And if God shall have compassion over us, then we shall know that all this cometh to us on account of the sin of afflicting this slave. And the men did so. And they supplicated Joseph and pressed him to forgive them. And they said, We have sinned to the Lord and to thee. Now therefore vouchsafe to request of thy God that he shall put away this death from amongst us, for we have sinned to him. And Joseph did according to their words, and the Lord hearkened to Joseph. And the Lord put away the plague which he had afflicted upon those men on account of Joseph. And the beast rose up from the ground, and they conducted them, and they went on. And the raging storm abated, and the earth became tranquilized. And the men proceeded on their journey to go down to Egypt. And the men knew that this evil had befallen them on account of Joseph. And they said to each other, Behold, we know that it was on account of his affliction that this evil befell us. Now, therefore, why shall we bring this death upon our souls? Let us hold counsel what to do to this slave. And one answered and said, Surely he told us to bring him back to his father. Now therefore come, let us take him back, and we will go to the place that he will tell us, and take from his family the price that we gave for him, and we will then go away. And one answered again and said, Behold, this counsel is very good, but we cannot do so, for the way is very far from us, and we cannot go out of our road. And one more answered and said unto them, This is the counsel to be adopted. We will not swerve from it. Behold, we are this day going to Egypt, and when we shall have come to Egypt, we will sell him there at a high price, and we will be delivered from his evil. And this thing pleased the men, and they did so, and they continued their journey to Egypt with Joseph.